Heckler & Koch is one of the premier small arms manufacturers in the world, producing probably more iconic firearms than any other arms manufacturer ever. These two red letters in that odd font over a black background carry more weight, represent more innovation, and are known internationally as a symbol of the highest quality in the firearms industry. When I get a new box with those two little red letters on it, well, let's just say it makes me feel good in ways that it probably shouldn't. Another sign that I may have a problem. HK has produced legendary guns from the MP5 to the UMP, the G3, the USP series of pistols, and the list just goes on and on. HK doesn't follow trends or come out with a new gun every six months just to generate sales. Their designs are prolific, iconic, and when they make something new, it's usually pretty noteworthy. A few years back, they introduced the full-size VP9 and put the Striker Fired 9 market on notice that everyone better up their game because HK came to play. The original VP9 was a huge hit because of its superior ergonomics, phenomenal trigger, and insane accuracy, but it seemed like many people wanted one just a little bit smaller and a little more concealable. So despite the common idea that HK hates its customers, they have delivered a smaller VP9 in the HK VP9 SK. This small package packs a ton of features into a subcompact that is sized just right. Many of the great design features of the original VP9 carry over to the SK model, and in my opinion, the most impressive feature of either of the VP9s is the most customizable and in my opinion, the most ergonomic grip available on any pistol today. The grip is so comfortable and just really fits in the hand extremely well. And on top of that, the grip can be customized to fit your individual hand with not only three different size back straps, but also three different size side panels. So you can dial the grip in to fit your hand exactly. Now the VP9SK is a compact gun intended for concealed carry. And another thing that I love is HK gives you a flush magazine for when size is of the utmost importance. But they also include a magazine with a pinky extension that complements the ergonomics of the grip. This is so nice and makes practicing a little easier and shooting the VP9SK much more enjoyable. Speaking of magazines, all full-size VP9 and P30 magazines will work just fine in the SK model. Also at the NRA show, HK had on display a cover for the 15-round full-size mags, as well as a new 13-round magazine with a grip cover for the VP9 SK. I think this is really cool, and while I haven't seen them as of the time this video is being put together, hopefully they will be available soon. This will give you so many magazine and grip options for the SK, and I think that it's great that HK is going to make these available. The trigger on the VP9 is great as well. This one is pulling at right about 5 pounds and has a very short reset. It may not be the lightest striker fire trigger available, but it's extremely good. Very shootable and adds to the superior accuracy of the VP9 SK. HK firearms just radiate quality. They feel solid, all of the function is tight with no play, and they are usually far more accurate than the shooter shooting them. I've been a huge fan of HK firearms for a long time, and a pretty serious collector of HK guns as well. Somewhat recently, there's been a stress test that apparently the HK VP9 didn't do so well in, floating around on the interwebs, and I feel it's somewhat tarnished HK's solid reputation. When I told people I was getting a VP9 SK, and admittedly, I was pretty excited about it, I would hear comments like, you're getting another VP9? You know that they melt in water, right? I've got to admit that I think these torture tests are kind of dumb. Typically what we do here is run a gun for a thousand rounds without a cleaning to see how well it performs. Because I really feel like that is a test the average person may have to put their gun through. 
which by the way, and as expected, the VP9SK ran flawlessly for over a thousand rounds using all different types of ammo, from good factory stuff to reload, steel case, aluminum case, whatever you fed it, the gun just ate it up and kept on banging. Besides the fact, all these tests are done with a sample size of one. If the gun passes, it may be an anomaly. Or likewise, if the gun fails, again, it could be an anomaly. And these tests just aren't realistic. If your average gun ownership experience consists of a lot of the things that you see in these torture tests, maybe guns aren't the right thing for you. Maybe you should stick to swords or knives or something with less mechanical moving parts. It really began bugging me all the comments about the reliability of the VP9, so I decided to see for myself. I would put my VP9 SK through one of these tests to see how it performs. Succeed or fail, as dumb as it may be, hopefully we can put to rest the VP9's reliability, one way or the other. Let me start off by saying these tests aren't a good idea. While it may give us some insight to the reliability of the VP9SK, it is really not scientific and only for entertainment purposes. This is really just a good way to tear up a perfectly good gun. It's not safe, and in other words, don't try this at home. First up on the torture test, we buried the VP9SK in dirt. The dirt at the range has plenty of very fine, almost sand-like particulates that can easily get deep into the gun. We packed the VP9 in good and left it for a little while. It would seem that dirt isn't enough to stop the VP9, so we'll see what else we can throw at it. The VP9SK also features HK's paddle mag release, which I'm a big fan of. If you've never used these before, they may take a little getting used to, but once you do, they're pretty awesome. I actually hit mine with my trigger finger on the right side of the gun. They are by design always left hand friendly and the slide release is also present on both sides of the gun and functions extremely well from both sides, making the HK VP9SK very southpaw friendly. Next up on the test would be the dreaded water test. To start, we wanted to do a more realistic water test. This next test, we're gonna call realistic water test because unless you're doing amphibious assaults or you swim laps with your concealed carry gun, more than likely the average person will never have a fully submerged gun. So we're gonna take the VP9SK in there and we're just gonna splash some water on it. Not bad, about 30 yards out. It would appear a little bit of water, or what I would call a realistic amount of water, isn't enough to slow down the VP9SK. So we'll keep going. HK is pretty famous for its barrels. They are cold hammer forged and polygonal. That leads to higher bullet velocities, greater accuracy, and much longer barrel lives. HK has tested similar barrels in their P30 to a mind-blowing 90,000 rounds. So needless to say, this barrel will probably last a lot longer than you do. I can also testify to the accuracy. The VP9SK was extremely accurate in our testing, as all HKs are. I don't think I've ever shot an HK firearm that wasn't exceptionally accurate. So you really didn't think that was going to be all the water we would let the VP9C, did you? 
Next up, full submersion. We dumped the VP9SK in water and made sure we gave it time to allow water to get to every nook and cranny, making sure that no more bubbles came out. Chamber round. Let it completely fill with water. Here we go, let's see if it melted. So weird, it worked. And I thought surely it was gonna melt and just be a worthless piece of plastic and metal that we couldn't do anything with. So there it is, as mind-blowing as that may seem, the HKVP9 functioned flawlessly after being fully submerged in water, despite what everyone on the interwebs will tell you. The VP9SK also has slide serrations on the front and back, which is a feature many of these smaller guns don't have, and it also features these charging supports that fit underneath the rear sight. I'm a huge fan of these and have been somewhat surprised they haven't popped up on some other guns since HK put them on the original VP9. They stick out just a little and really aid in gripping the slide for charging. They work great for anyone and would help in adverse conditions like if the gun were wet, but I really think that they would shine with someone who has weaker hands or someone who suffers from arthritis who may have a hard time charging a semi-auto. I really like them, it's just one of those simple ideas that actually work very well. However, if you're not a fan, they can be switched out to flat panels, essentially eliminating them. Recently, drop tests have become a little more prevalent than they used to be, so we wanted to make sure that we included a drop test section in our test. Striker indicator still good, trigger pulls. We dropped the VP9SK on gravel, and we did do this with an empty chamber, relying on the idea that if the trigger didn't move back, and the firing pin indicator present on the VP9 was still cocked, this would represent the gun maintaining safe condition through the drop test. Striker indicator still good. Trigger pulls. I know that some people will say this is not a conclusive test. And to that, I will say that none of these tests are conclusive. But hopefully it will give us an idea of the safety level of the gun, since we know some other Striker guns can't pass the same test. Trigger pulls. We dropped it on every side and of course the now very important negative 30 degrees and through it all the trigger never went to the rearward position and the firing pin remained cocked. So just to make things a little tougher we moved over to cement with some really harsh impacts and I still can't believe I'm doing this to one of my HKs. Striker indicator is good. Trigger pulls. Can't believe I'm doing this to an HK. Striker indicator is good. Trigger pulls. one of our, our, our caulking things but anyway striker indicator is good trigger pulls at one point one drop apparently moved the sight a bit and we lost one of our charging supports but the gun maintained safe condition all the way through the test but the vp9 isn't as pretty as it once was The VP9 also features an all-steel guide rod, and HK went with dual recoil springs in the SK model over the flat wire spring that's in the full-size VP9. The barrel also has a polished feed ramp, and everything inside just looks really good with no machining marks, and everything just radiates that HK quality. 
Another thing that is uncommon in compacts is the VP9SK features a full pick rail up front for accessories. It will easily disassemble without pulling the trigger, and as all modern HK pistols do, it features HK's harsh environment finish, which not only looks good, but is supposed to do a good job protecting the gun from the elements. Next up on the torture test, we thought we'd run the VP9SK over and see how it holds up. I'm sure a lot of people are saying that's not very realistic. I would argue that in a very bad situation, a police officer could find his duty gun run over and may need to retrieve it and require it to work after that. Most people would just use a car or something cute like a Jeep, but we're in Alabama and for the most part all we have here is trucks, so this task won't be any easier for the VP9SK. It would appear that a half ton of American steel isn't quite enough to stop the VP9SK, and at this point, I'm really impressed. The VP9SK, in my opinion, is the perfect size for a subcompact. It's a little larger than the Glock 26, which I always felt was a little too small. It's also just a touch longer than the HKP30SK and the HKP2000SK. I also like how the grip of the VP9SK is cut deeper at the web of your hand than the P30SK. I'm sure that this has something to do with the hammer fired mechanism versus the striker fired, but either way it sits in the hand a little deeper and better, and feels even more comfortable than the already very comfortable P30SK. I'm really liking the feel and really everything about the VP9SK, which is going to make what I do next even that much dumber. So have you ever been doing something and it's going really well? Maybe even way better than you had ever even hoped it would go? And then you just push it way too far. Go right over that edge. Just watch this. I decided since the VP9SK was doing even better than I had even hoped it would, I would shoot it with a shotgun to prove, well, I'm not exactly sure what I'm thinking I'm proving here. Since two is always better than one, I decided to flip the VP9SK over and hit it from the other side too. If you're going to take something too far, you might as well make sure that there's no coming back. Just uh, shot the VP9SK with a shotgun. Uh, kind of gave it a pretty serious custom stippling job. Um, I am trying to keep this in a safe direction because it is loaded. Um, and we are going to see if it works after all that. So here we go. Trigger won't reset. No. Well, I hate to say it, I think the shotgun blast killed it. Okay, actually, I was just playing with the gun off camera a little bit, kind of saying goodbye to my old friend. And um, I think, I think we found something. We might be able to get it to work. If I manually reset the trigger with my finger, I think it's going to work. Let's try it out here. I 
way. It's still working. I mean, it's been shot with a shotgun twice and it is technically still working. Technically, the VP9 SK still does work. Sure, it's a little rough around the edges, a little worse for wear, but technically it does still fire. Sure, you have to manually reset the trigger, but it still functions. Looks like a very custom stippling job, and it would appear the shotgun blew off the left side paddle on the mag release, but that's not the side I use anyway, so it's all good. The VP9SK is a good bit smaller than the original VP9, but interestingly enough, when compared to a Glock 19, the slide is only a little bit shorter, but the grip is significantly shorter. So basically in size, that puts it in between a Glock 26 and a Glock 19. With far superior ergonomics, trigger, and I think we've proved that it's every bit as durable and reliable as the Glock. For me, I would say it's the perfect carry size. I always felt that the 26 was a little too small for me to shoot comfortably, and the 19 was just a little too big for me to carry comfortably. I think that I actually like the VP9SK better than the original VP9, because HK has managed to pack everything that was so great about the original in a smaller package without making it feel too small to comfortably shoot. If you want to carry a subcompact double stack, I can't recommend anything higher than the VP9SK. It has more features and better ergonomics than the competition, while maintaining that perfect medium of a gun that is comfortable to shoot and comfortable to carry. One more test. We were looking back over some of the footage and I was accused by one of my buddies that during the submersion test, I let the VP9 drain too long, allowing water to get out of it, making the test easier. I didn't want to be accused of taking it too easy on the VP9 SK. So to further prove it doesn't have a problem with submersion or water in general, we'll attempt to shoot it underwater. Now, provided the gun does work, the trigger will have to be reset manually because we lost that feature in the shotgun blast, but I guess these things happen. These nice people said I could use their pool whenever I wanted. This probably isn't what they had in mind. Good thing I don't think they watch too much YouTube. I don't want to hear any more about HKs or VP9s having troubles with water. That was just five rounds, underwater, flawless, and it even held open on the last round. I don't know what else you could ask for. Man, that was stupid. Just shot a VP9SK with a shotgun. Now I need to buy another VP9SK? What a waste. I know, I'll just sell this one to help pay for the new one. It, it still kind of works. For sale, gently used HK VP9SK. Normal light wear. Low round count. Custom stippling job. Some holster wear. I'll just attach a stock photo to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be headed to Nichols Outfitters to get another HK VP9 SK since I've destroyed this one. Also, if you're interested in any other pistol, rifle, shotgun, or suppressor, they probably have it. And don't worry, if you don't live in Alabama, they have a huge presence on Gun Broker and Gun Prime, or just give them a call and they could probably ship it to the FFL of your choice. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the best possible way to do that is to click the links in the description. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. That's the best possible way to keep up with what we're doing and know about the projects we're currently working on. If you like the video, go ahead and hit like. Be sure to share it on your social media and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
Also like to give a big thanks to Green Ridge Shooting Range in Cleveland, Alabama for letting us come out while the range was closed and film a good portion of this video. If you're anywhere near Cleveland, Alabama, you need to go check them out. This is a great facility. He's got 200 yard ranges, plenty of pistol bays, really great facility, a lot of fun to shoot there.